Hey, what's going on guys? It's Tom Mason here, back with another video. And today, I'm not in the Amazon, I'm back in Ireland, but I want to talk to you about why I think the Lopro Whistler 450 is one of the best bags for wildlife photographers. You know, over the last couple of years, I've been through a ton of bags, looking for one that is a great compromise between carrying capacity, ruggedness, and you know, all those features you want as a wildlife photographer, um, whilst also being, you know, perfect for travel and stuff. And finally, I think I found a bag that I really like. So today I'm gonna to walk you through it, show you some of the features that I think make it a really great pack. Uh, so let's get cracking. So the Low Pro 450 is designed for outdoor and adventure photographers. And originally uh, is kind of intended to be a ski pack. Um, you can tell that because it has the rear entry um, and also the sides were developed to have skis laid down them for any of your backcountry adventures. But in actual fact, when you look at the bag, break down its features, it's a fantastic set for the wildlife photographer as well, because what it offers in terms of internal space for camera equipment, as well as the features in terms of support and outdoor accessory pockets, mean it's really good for your wildlife photography needs. I mean, just going through the outer sections to start, you have a zipper section on one side. It's quite thin, good for kind of, um, you know, any covers, things like that anything you need fast access to. You've got a nice pocket on the hip belt, good for a cliff bar, anything like that. On the rear, you've got a really big pocket that I'll talk about in a bit. You've got a top pocket, as well as these side access points that are great for mounting your tripod, meaning you can have easy access to get it straight out in the field. The whole thing is constructed of this really durable nylon material. It's really rugged and hard. Um, and over the last like year of battering it about, I haven't got any holes, I haven't got any like problems with it whatsoever, and it's really looking quite good. You might notice the colors a bit discolored, and that's nothing to do with the material. That's because when I first got it, I spray painted it with a nice uh, sand color because I wanted it to look rugged, I wanted it to look used, uh, so that when I went to South America, it wouldn't scream expensive equipment. So that's why that is the color that it is. And there's one other modification that I've made to it that I'll talk to you about in a minute. Oh. So about the Lopro in terms of uh, its internal space and storage. Well, firstly, this bag, although it is the largest one of the Whistler series, for a bag of its size, when you first get it, it doesn't have the massive capacity that really I wanted. The reason for this is because the bag actually comes with two plastic struts that go down the side. And these are for, to provide added protection for when skis or anything's mounted on the side. It stops any crushing from the outside. But for me as a wildlife photographer, I don't really need that huge protection. And it's already padded and pretty rugged. So what I decided to do was have a small hack. And on the internal insert, I cut down the sides and took out the plastic internals. And that means that I have a lot more stretch of my bag it means I can absolutely maximize its capacity to take more with me. Now the bag itself now will hold a really good amount of gear. I've got my Pro uh, D850 here with the 302.8. Uh, that's got a 1.4 teleconverter on it. And that easily sits down the middle. I've got a drone on one side, um, flash gun, as well as one, two, three lenses and a spare body down the other side. When I went to South America, went to Peru, um, I actually maxed out this bag to see um, if I carry everything I needed and it absolutely swallowed it. Because you now have that interior stretch, uh, the kind of interior pocket here, um, I've, you know, with the things ripped out, it stretches right out and I was able to fit the D850, D500, 70 to 200, 300 prime, 20 mil prime, 85 mil prime, 105 mil macro, as well as my 24 to 70, uh, a Zacuto finder, uh, my flash gun. Um, I also had in here uh, my laptop that I'll talk about where that goes in a minute, two extra hard drives and all of the associated chargers all fitted in this bag. And it's absolutely brilliant because this bag as it stands 
will go overhead in the locker on an aeroplane, meaning I can carry everything I need for one shoot right above my head. Meaning I'll get to my location with all my gear ready to shoot. And that to me is a vital thing that any camera bag needs to have. If I can't take it in the overhead locker, it's a no-go for me. And it's really great to see that this bag uh, can be used. I've had it on Ryanair, BA, LATAM, and interior flights in Peru, and it absolutely passed every single test. If I would have had to check the bag because they said it was too big, I can take out that internal compartment and use that to go under the seat in front of me, but I didn't have to at all. Really great choice if, if you're traveling because it looks just like a kind of normal outdoor bag, meaning that it kind of blends in a bit better and it doesn't scream camera bag. Something that's really important, not only for getting it past those baggage checks, but also for, you know, keeping it away for thieves, because if it looks like a normal bag, doesn't scream camera, they're less likely to go for it. Now with any camera bag for, you know, wildlife photography, in addition to the camera compartment, another really important um, kind of requirement is that of being able to have extra personal gear. And the Whistler is great for that. You know, it was designed as a ski pack, so they've provided ample space for outdoor accessories. On the top, you have a really nice quick access pocket. Um, unzip this, and I've easily got in here my drone controller, spare batteries, often have my binoculars, headphones, loads of stuff in here and this is a great place where i carry the stuff when i'm making videos but also fast access to batteries memory cards in a little pocket up the top you know really good great space for your lunch as well um, and that zips in really nicely again quick access and easy to get to on the back you'll see that actually there's uh, two zippers you've got one that goes around like this and then one that actually opens the main pocket and what that allows you to have is an expandable back pocket You'll see here that um, basically it allows me to take a huge amount of extra personal gear with me. I've got a tarpaulin that's nice to sit on. I've got my coat. I've got a bag hide, a jumper, the waterproof cover for the backpack, rocket blower, flask, and a camera cover. You know, all fits in the internal section. Um, I managed to stretch this out and get absolutely loads of gear in here. Um, but of course, if you're flying, you can't stretch that pocket out. And that's great because you can just zip it closed, um, reduce the size and look of the bag. And that means that you can then just have a laptop in here, um, as well as a couple of extra bits. And it's gonna fit straight in that overhead locker. Now, if you're out and about, you've also got a nice pocket on the back. Uh, you know, I've just got like, a cliff bar and a head torch in there. Again, really easy access and nice organization. But what I really like about this internal section is the back bit. This is that really hard nylon that's also on the bottom and it's completely waterproof. So if your jacket, your hide, whatever gets absolutely saturated, you can put it in here and it's not gonna kind of like bleed through into the main camera compartment meaning that you can have a wet section and a dry section and keep all your camera gear uh, nice and protected even when you're hiking back with loads of wet clothes. It also has compatibility for a hydration pack. So if you wanna have that when you're hiking, absolutely love that when it's out in the rainforest because it meant you could just keep hydrated and keep carrying the bag. But you know, just ample space for loads of stuff. And of course, in addition to this, you've got a load of daisy chain loops that mean you can connect extra stuff You've got straps on the side and you can strap to the bottom, meaning if you wanted to carry enough gear for you know, an overnight stay, you could easily fit it in this pack. And that's really, really good to have. So few backpacks feature a really great big space for lots of outdoor gear. And I think here is a good compromise. It's not huge that you're gonna take like all your tents and everything. You know, you can if you strap them onto the sides, but it's perfect for being out for a day, maybe a couple of days, um, and having all the extras you need. And for me, I find it absolutely essential. And of course, because you can get your laptop in here as well, when you're traveling, you can still use the same bag uh, for absolutely everything that is really, really nice. So what are the shortcomings of the 450? Well, to be honest, because the material is so strong and rugged, it is quite heavy. It's never gonna be as light as a proper backpacking uh, bag from you know, like Osprey or someone like that. Um, and also I find that the back system, although it is nice and lightweight, it's really thin and portable and it easily fits in an overhead locker. I really wish there was a bit more padding. You know, when you've got 
you know, 20 kilos worth of gear in this bag, it's really heavy on the hips. And I think that just a little bit more padding around the waist, maybe a removable hip belt so that you could take it off when you were traveling uh, would be really handy. And just these, you know, although these sections don't need as much padding, a bit more and maybe some breathability would be really good. But overall, you know, I think the pack in terms of how it's placed um, and the shortcomings are definitely livable for a bag that offers you this level of performance, the ability to have a great section of outdoor gear and camera gear in one simple package. You know, you do have to customize it. You do have to cut those interior plastic bits to get the maximum size for that more gear. Um, and yeah, I covered mine in paint because I think, you know, it blends in a little bit better. But overall, the Low Pro 450, if you're looking for a pack that's going to be great for outdoor use when you're shooting wildlife or, you know, going after landscapes, it really is a great one to check out. I'm thinking that I'll be keeping this for a good, good few years now. Um, and it's really going to take a solid pack with a boatload more features uh, to beat this one for me. Uh, so well done, Low Pro. Really, really like it. Um, and I'm looking forward to dragging it around and beating it up over the next couple of years. Um, but I think if you're in the market for a bag, this is certainly one to check out. Well, thank you very much for joining me. Um, if you've got any questions about the Low Pro 450 Whistler, uh, drop them in the comments below. More than happy to get back to you. Um, join me again soon for more wildlife photography videos. And uh, yeah, get out and get shooting. Thank you.